Good evening, and welcome to the 2012 Sing Out for the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. As you can see and hear, voices from all over our Cuyahoga County community are joining in harmony to sing out to support survivors of sexual assault. Good evening, I'm Paul Clark. I'm the regional president for PNC here in Cleveland, and it's an honor to serve as the co-chair of tonight's event, along with Beth Mooney, Chairman and CEO of Key Corp. Beth is a great supporter of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, and trust me when I tell you she went to extraordinary effort to be here tonight, so thanks for that, Beth, and thanks for your leadership. The need for tonight's work has never been greater. More than 150,000 members of our Cuyahoga County community have experienced rape in their lifetime and more than one-third of those being children. As you may know, rape and sexual abuse survivors are three times more likely to suffer from depression, 26 times more likely to be addicted. Untreated trauma can create lifelong barriers to productivity and health, impacting not only individuals, but also our entire region. But with your support, we are alleviating those risks and beating those odds. We are doing so by supporting a critical community resource, the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, a place where every day women, men, and children in our community are breaking free from sexual assault and finding hope, healing, and a friend who understands. We celebrate the center's leadership in promoting prevention and recruiting community members, young and old, to act as advocates to eliminate sexual violence. And in creating change that is urgently needed, we celebrate Cleveland Rape Crisis Center's role as a leading voice and a vocal public presence, ensuring that sexual violence is always top of mind in our community dialogue. This important and courageous work is only possible because of all of you. Beth and I are happy to announce that this year's Sing Out has raised a record-breaking $344,000 and still counting. That's a 10% increase over our 2010 event and the attendance has doubled with a mighty crowd here tonight of over 800 people. Thank you. Megan and Pete, congratulations on this remarkable achievement. Thank you for your leadership and that of the Rape Crisis Center's staff, volunteers, and board. Beth and I would also like to offer special thanks to the members of our Sing Out host committee 
and our corporate sponsors for making all this fundraising a reality. In particular, thanks to our leading sponsors, Fairmount Minerals, Shar and Chuck Fowler, KeyBank, thank you, and my colleagues at PNC. And while we have so much for which to be proud, our work is not done. Today we stand within reach of an utterly ambitious fundraising goal of $375,000, and I'm confident all of you here this evening will help us achieve that goal. Beth? Thank you, Paul. And what's important about that goal, and I think you need to know that is every dollar that is raised directly supports the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center mission. So for those of you who have contributed, we thank you. And for those of you who have not, we hope you will join us in this critical mission and help reach our successful goal tonight. And if our words are not inspiration enough, we're quite confident that tonight's performance will be. Under the direction of the talented, passionate, energetic, and returning music director, Katherine Harsha, we have assembled an amazing corral of individuals who do not sing for their day jobs. <laughs> With just a handful of rehearsals, Catherine has transformed this group into a star ensemble that we will hear tonight. The Rape Crisis Center deeply appreciates the time and talent contributed by our Sing Out Corral members. Thanks for making time in your busy schedules to participate in this special program. Finally, we extend our warmest thanks to you, the audience. Your being here tonight and your support at Sing Out enables the center to do what it does best, provide comprehensive, no-cost services to those who are in need while working hard to bring about social change. Cleveland Rape Crisis Center has a friend in you. So thank you for your being here tonight. Thank you to our Corral members, and please enjoy the show. to the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center because I was working on a failed marriage. I knew that there was something wrong outside of the marriage going bad. There was something wrong with me. I could remember at one time sitting in my bedroom, looking around at the four walls, thinking like, this is, this is my life, you know. I have no one you know, and my family would be right in the next room, you know. But coming here, being able to deal with the situation, I learned how to live, you know, how to um, be a part of a group, how to socialize, how to smile, you know, how to accept myself, how to take compliments. You know, those things, you know, that people or, you know, we normally would take for granted, you know. I felt like I would never experience what it is to be normal, live a normal life. I was always questioning, you know, what was, what did normal feel like? And just being part of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, I could say I, I found that answer, you know. It's normal for me to look in the mirror and comb my hair and look at a picture, you know, that I've taken and like who I see. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to live. I deserve to have fun. I take ownership of my body, my, my mind. It wasn't my fault. It was a trauma that took place, but I can now turn it around to something positive by helping others.
Good evening, everyone. If that is not inspiring, I can't tell you what is. <clears throat> I'm Pete DeMarco, and I am proud and honored to serve as president of the board of directors of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. And I have a few, a number of people to thank, but before I do, because Megan said I can move off the script a little bit, um, I have to tell you, that reception was fantastic. There was a buzz in that room out there, and I hope you all felt it. And I thank all 800 of you for coming and enjoying this evening with us so far, and there's more to come. So thank you all out there. Fantastic. I want to send out a special thank you to both Beth Mooney and Paul Clark for being outstanding co-chairs for this event tonight. Let's give them a round of applause. Paul, Beth, thank you. And most of all, thank you to the fantastic staff, all of the staff at the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. What you do every day, day in, day out, 24-7, is absolutely amazing. And it is why I love to serve this organization as long as I have, and I will continue to support it. So thank you, everyone.
A special thanks has to go out to Sarah Trimble. And I can't see where you're sitting, Sarah, but please, every detail of this event was planned, orchestrated, and uh, coordinated by Sarah, who's our development director. Sarah, special round to you. Thank you, Sarah. So it is my privilege tonight to introduce our Sing Out honorees. They are two extraordinary people, each of whom have made a distinct and lasting contribution to survivors of sexual assault in our community. Our first honoree this evening is Mayor Frank G. Jackson. <clears throat> Let me say a few words about Mayor Jackson. He has always been a fierce public safety advocate, especially now as the 56th mayor of the city of Cleveland. In the fall of 2010, his term was abruptly interrupted when the bodies of 11 raped and murdered women were found in a home of a convicted sex offender, putting Cleveland on the national news for all of the wrong reasons. The mayor sprung to, act to immediate action assembling a special commission on missing persons and sex crimes investigation and inviting Megan O'Brien, CEO of the Rape Crisis Center, to serve on that commission. His leadership of this commission has since created transformational change for survivors of sexual assault by strengthening protocols and systems within the Cleveland Division of Police and promoting greater understanding of sex crimes throughout the city in the greater Cleveland area. Please give your attention to the screen as we hear what some of his friends have to say about his impact on our city. I feel so proud to have gotten to work side by side with Mayor Jackson on the Special Commission on Sex Crimes and Missing Persons that he brought together after the Imperial Avenue murders. He really had the courage and the leadership to decide to challenge the status quo within his own organization to say what better practices might we be able to put in place that's going to make conditions better for victims who are coming forward to report very difficult crimes. He impacted not only the city of Cleveland and our residents, but communities throughout the United States. Those that we spoke to wanted to know, what did we do in Cleveland? Our results, due to the mayor's initiative, his leadership, did make national news. And people looked to Cleveland and said, wow, this is what they're doing here. The commission, which was initiated by Mayor Jackson, was a great partnership. It wasn't about looking at the police department in a negative way. It was looking at the police department and the services provided by those detectives and how we could help them improve the services to this community. I've never met a more compassionate, committed individual in my life, and he has no hidden agendas. His agenda is one thing, make this a better place. Mayor Jackson is a committed, dynamic leader who's reflective, who always puts other people first, and who always does the very best job that he can to reach his goals. He is not only reflective, but he's analytical. Uh, he's a problem solver. He looks for solutions that include teamwork, that include people. And so he has a wonderful and interesting style of leadership that gets the job done in an inclusive way, uh, always focusing on people and always with care. The mayor is not a politician's politician. He is about leading and about taking care of business. He calls it like he sees it. He speaks with clarity. He speaks with conviction. He has a great intellect and a great capacity to handle and manage a broad range of issues and problems at one time, simultaneously. Uh, great attention to detail, and he has a steel trap memory. He doesn't forget anything. Here's something I think people should know about Mayor Jackson that might be unexpected. It's his shoes. 
I think about those shoes a lot because they're not really shoes, they're boots. And many of you may have seen the mayor wear them. In fact, he may be wearing them tonight. They're spit shined, they're polished. And I always think they're a lot more than boots. I think they are what provides him firm footing as mayor of our city. I think they are what provide support for his backbone and his character. They're a lot more than boots. They're so cool, in fact, I went out and bought a pair for myself. I'll never be as cool as the mayor, but I would sure hope to emulate his character. The mayor is a great friend because he's someone who sits there quietly in your corner. And you know that uh, that relationship is sincere. You know that that relationship is genuine. And you also know that it's a relationship that you can call on if and when you would ever need it. On behalf of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, Mayor Jackson, congratulations on this award and with gratitude for all that you do for survivors of sexual assault and the city of Cleveland. Mayor Jackson, the Rape Crisis Center sings your praises. Please join me to accept your Sing Out Award. Well, uh, good evening, good evening. You know, I wanted to uh, first congratulate Mr. Stevens on his recognition tonight. And I want to thank the Rape Crisis Center, the board, the chairman of the board, its staff, Ms. O'Brien, everyone uh, for what they do. You know, I, I knew of the Rape Crisis Center, but I didn't really know them until a couple of years ago. And what I know now is about their passion and their commitment uh, to people and the healing process of people who have been victims. You know, everyone uh, wants to serve, and I think service is a great calling, but everyone cannot do it. But I will tell you that the Rape Crisis Center not only does it, but it does it in a way that provides the things that people need at the most vulnerable point in their life, and they create dignity for people. So again, uh, I thank you very much. Thank you. Our second honoree tonight is Tom Stevens, Vice Chair and Chief Administration, Administrative Officer of Key Bank. Tom is a longtime supporter, champion, and friend of the Rape Crisis Center, having co-chair two record-breaking fundraising initiatives, the 2006 Sing Out and our 2011 Faces of Change Luncheon. Tom has opened new doors and welcomed new corporate partners to the center, helping us give voice and support to more survivors of sexual violence than ever before. He has elevated the center's mission and work with his courageous and steadfast leadership. A few of Tom's closest friends are eager to sing his praises tonight, so please draw your attention to the screen again. We are so pleased to honor Tom Stevens with a Sing Out Award because he has been a steady supporter of the Rape Crisis Center for the past decade. Uh, Tom has used his position and his leadership to really bring a mission that has been largely uh, misunderstood and marginalized in the community to really bring it into the broader dialogue of Cleveland and particularly the corporate community. Oh, Tom has so many great qualities. Uh, one, he's very forthright, he's funny, uh, he's honest, uh, he has great character. He puts his heart and soul into anything he does, not only giving of his time very, very generously, but also financially. And he's, he's just a person that will, if he believes in a cause, will go to extra lengths 
to, to make sure that he makes a great contribution. Tom richly deserves to be honored tonight because he has been such a strong champion of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center and its work. First, he has provided critical leadership and his personal counsel to help steer the organization. He's encouraged broad support of the CRCC's mission at a time when it was not viewed as mainstream, not only by the personal support that he and Chris have provided, but also by successfully co-chairing the 2006 Sing Out and last year's Faces of Change luncheon. The Cleveland Rape Crisis Center is a stronger and better organization because of the countless hours and the significant support that Tom Stevens has given them. Tom is one of those unsung heroes in our community. I mean, he doesn't try to grab the stage and he doesn't attempt to overpower anyone with personality. He quietly but very effectively works in the background and Tom can truly get things done. Tom is an extremely effective spokesperson for an organization. When he decides he wants to support a mission, he generally has no problem getting other people on board because what I've learned is that he is widely revered and respected in all corners of Cleveland. Tom is a biker. He sometimes rides his motorcycle downtown to Key Tower, then puts on his suit and goes up to the executive suite. The second thing I think that not everybody knows is that Tom is a Democrat. He's not a screaming liberal Democrat, but he is a Democrat. And he, in spite of that, is highly respected by people like Dick Pogue and Umberto and others who are on the other side of the aisle. Tom is a friend to anybody who he comes in contact with because he's so engaging, he's outgoing, he likes people, and he's efficient. He doesn't waste their time, and uh, I think uh, busy people in the community like that. So. He's a great friend to a number of organizations, and of course he's got a great uh, uh, band of personal friends as well. So he's, he's a terrific fellow, and uh, I'm glad he's a friend of the Rape Crisis Center. Tom Stevens, on behalf of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, congratulations on this honor. It has been a pleasure and a lot of fun to work with you over the years, and we're so excited to present this award to you. Tom, the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center joins others in singing your praises, and you've already come forward to accept <laughs> I'll hold this for you. First of all, I can't see anybody because the lights are so bright, so I know you're out there. Uh, but I have always wanted to be in a course in Corral, and uh, Someday I'll get some talent and be able to do what this wonderful chorale does, singing to change the world when it comes to rape and sexual violence. So it's nice to be on stage with you. Um, that's the only way I'll get here. <laughs> and they're grateful for that, quite frankly. But uh, first let me start by uh, congratulating Mayor Jackson uh, as a co-honoree. Um, I would add my thanks for his courageous leadership with respect to the Sowell case and taking what was a tragic event for Cleveland and turning it into a learning event to make this a better city. So congratulations and thank you for your leadership. <laughs> also, um, I'd like to thank uh, the event co-chairs, uh, Paul Clark and Beth Mooney. Uh, whenever uh, you have civic organizations or community groups that are trying to make a better life in Cleveland, you'll always find Beth and Paul nearby. There are two of the most committed uh, civic leaders we have in Cleveland. Uh, they're, in addition to Beth being my boss, uh, both uh, <laughs> Paul and Beth are friends and colleagues, and thank you for serving as event co-chairs and making this such a successful event tonight. Um, I also have a lot of key colleagues here tonight that I would like to acknowledge and say thank you to. Um, one of them is Lynn Woodman, who is uh, a Corral co-chair, and along with Steve Ellis, and. Uh, and has devoted lots of hours to making the corral successful and recruiting members. And there are numerous uh, key people in the corral and in the audience. So thank you for being here and participating and for being supportive of the Rape Privacy Center. 
And to finish the recognitions, uh, a special recognition uh, to my assistant, uh, who's been my secretary for over 35 years, Marlene Shepard and her husband. And And uh, most importantly, to my wife, Chris, and my daughter, Erin, who came in from Manchester, New Hampshire today for this event, and uh, my father-in-law and his wife. So thank you for being here. Um, I'm truly grateful and humbled to be an honoree of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. It's always nice to hear your friends and colleagues say positive things about you. And, uh, and not even have to attend your own wake to get them. So uh, <laughs> um, uh, I had never been to Cleveland uh, before third year job interviews uh, out of law school. And in 1973, um, my very first law, uh, law firm interview in Cleveland was at Jones Day uh, with a Duke grad, a guy named Lanty Smith. And Lanty Smith was at Jones Day for a number of years, was a young partner. Uh, eventually left Jones Day and went to North Carolina and became president of Burlington Industries and ultimately became the chairman at Wachovia before it was acquired by uh, Wells Fargo. Um, in 1973, which is shocking how long ago that is, uh, we were mired in Watergate, but it was a time of optimism and social activism. So when we're, I was talking with Jones Day, one of the things they stressed was the amount of community involvement and the dedication the partners showed to making Cleveland a better and vibrant city. And the, the, the effort that Lanty talked about that he had passion about was he was working with three organizations, um, uh, Cleveland Now, the Free Clinic, and Case Western's Women's Law Forum uh, to create a 24-hour hotline for victims of rape. And it was out of that effort that in 1974, uh, the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center was formed. Uh, and so looking back, you know, I, I, I reflect back on that original conversation with Lanty Smith, and uh, the key he focused on was the importance of collaboration between three organizations and how rare that was at the time. And now looking back over 40 years in Cleveland, um, we all take it for fact that collaboration and a public-private partnership uh, are essential ingredients to success. But in 1973, that was rare and a new concept to the city. I never knew the source of Lanty's passion for the Rape Crisis Center and the 24-hour hotline, but when you think about the statistics that one in four girls and one in six boys are survivors of sexual violence, as I look around this room, it means there are a lot of untold stories in this room and every place we go. So I have been privileged to play some small part over the years in supporting the Rape Crisis Center. We all have a lot of community and civic organizations that we are or could be involved with. The Cleveland Rape Crisis Center deserves our commitment because of the importance of the mission and the quality of the leadership, both at the staff level with Megan O'Brien and her team, and at the board level under Peter DeMarco's leadership. But as Lanty Smith said to me all the way back in 1973, when a victim of rape or sexual violence is reaching out for help, even if in the middle of the night, there has to be someone at the other end of the line to answer that plea with compassion and understanding. I'm humbled to receive this honor tonight and privileged to be in this room filled with colleagues who support the Rape Crisis Center's mission to support survivors of sexual violence, promote healing and prevention, and create social change. So thank, so thank you very much for being here tonight, and thank you for this great honor.
abused between the ages of 8 and 13. I told no one for um, many, many years. I was in my 40s when I finally told my wife that I had had that experience. And I blamed myself for the abuse that had happened because I was looking at it through that I, at lens of an adult versus the lens of that child that was being abused. And for me that silence was loud. It was, it was lots of clutter and noise that I created in my own life to bury those things that I didn't want to deal with. I f found the men's uh, rape group uh, through an online search, contacted the Rape Crisis Center and had my intake interview um, to sit in front of other people and tell my story. Uh, was really hard. Uh, but the important thing about it was that in hearing other people talk about their story and their abuse, I was better able to feel my own uh, feelings about my abuse and process those feelings. It was a very dynamic process of growth and change for me um, in which I came to terms with a lot of the issues that I, I had struggled with. The silence really came for me after I started sharing my story and internally things settled down. What I've learned about myself in this process is that I am stronger than I thought I was at times. I've learned that bad things happen to people and you can either spend your life dwelling on those bad things that they did to you, or you can put that behind you and live the moment and enjoy the moment. And living life in the moment is much nicer than living uh, in the fear of the past.
restless streams I walked along Narrow streets of This piece of poetry was written by a client of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. This piece of poetry is entitled, No Trouble on the Roads. No trouble on the roads, announced the traffic reporter, but I was in my car. I was on the road. Don't my troubles count? Troubles that wake me in the middle of the night, suddenly and violently dangling me on the edge of panic and fear. Troubles that wake me in the middle of the night, mocking my ability to forget, mocking my ability to be normal. Troubles that hide in the corner of my being, gnawing at the core of who I am. Troubles that have been entombed now wanting to push out and be seen, now wanting to push out and be heard. No trouble on the roads to report, announced the traffic reporter. But I was in my car. I was on the road. Don't my troubles count?
Carson Tompkins. I am a fourth year student at Cleveland State University where I study cultural anthropology. And we are here to tell you the story of how we came to the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. But first, a little bit of background. Uh, Carson and I met when we were in eighth grade. We were casual acquaintances for a little while. And then one day we decided to invite our friends to a movie on Super Bowl Sunday. Apparently that's not a popular day to go to the movies because we were the only two people there. Uh, we bonded, we have become best friends, uh, and that pretty much leads us to where we are now. Um, so as I mentioned, we've been friends since before high school, but the first year that we went to college, everything changed. Uh, I lived away from home for the first time, and Carson attended a different school, so the distance made it difficult to keep in touch and maintain our friendship. A few years earlier when we were in high school, Carson had confided in me that she was sexually abused as a child by a friend's father who lived on her street. I was just glad that she trusted me enough to tell me. Uh, Carson experienced a normal level of anxiety during high school, but the new stresses of college brought on symptoms that we'd never seen before. Uh, even though my abuse started when I was three and ended when I was four, I had no memory of it until I was nearly 16. By the time I was 18, I was in college, I had symptoms I had never seen before, and I had no idea how to handle any of them. I was completely terrified. I didn't want my family to know, I didn't want to tell anyone else, and it was really hard trying to cope with the idea that my brain could and had hidden really important parts of my life from me. Panic attacks made it hard for Carson to leave her house, which interfered with school and work. So as we talked more about it, we started to realize that the problem was beyond us both. I had a feeling of absolute helplessness before we came to the Rape Crisis Center. I'd done everything I could to offer advice. I knew Carson was unhappy, miserable, and anxious, and not being able to see her because of the distance made it even more difficult. Carson had not told her parents at this point, and she was concerned that they would find out if she talked to her family doctor. So I searched online for resources, and Carson decided that the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center offered the most confidentiality. We scheduled a day to meet and take the bus to the center together. I was completely frozen when Sarah made me get off the bus, panicked, really. I hadn't been able to sleep. I was having trouble leaving my room because my panic attacks were so, so severe, and I had no idea what to do about it. I'd already made Sarah promise me that she wouldn't let me get off the bus before our stop, and luckily for both of us, she kept her promise. She got me into the building and eventually onto the elevator, and I don't think I could have managed it without her. I was shaking the entire elevator ride up, but Sarah helped me keep going and refused to let me go back, and I'm glad she did. We were both completely out of ideas, and the crisis center was our last great hope. I was still terrified, but everyone at the crisis center was so nice. They really were friendly. They didn't push me to tell them anything. I remember how scared I was when I walked in, and then I remember that moment of feeling like, oh my God, there's someone who actually understands what I'm saying. The center taught me to find a strength that I already had and how to use it so that I could live my daily life again. I came with Carson to her first few therapy appointments at the center, but eventually she managed the trips on her own. In the two years since, I've noticed that Carson has a much higher level of confidence. I think she still struggles with her anxiety and definitely still has days that are really difficult, but now she has the tools to deal with it. I'm proud to be Carson's friend and I'm proud of her, not just because of the way she's overcome her own trauma, but because she's now speaking out to help other survivors. It's really inspiring to see her talk about her abuse. I remember when it was too painful for her to tell me and even then to tell her parents, but now she's speaking publicly in videos, to the media, and in front of over 800 of you here tonight. Um, my message to other survivors who haven't come to the center yet is if you're scared or you don't think anyone will believe you or that you don't have money for treatment, all of the treatment is completely free and it can really change your life. I understand why someone would be scared. I was terrified. It's really hard as a survivor. You can talk to your friends and your family and they really want to be there for you. But there's nothing like talking to a trained professional who knows what you're going through and can help in ways that I'd never even imagined were possible before my first trip to the center. Since I've started speaking out publicly, the attitude I've been met with from a lot of people is, I'm not a rape survivor. No one I know is a rape survivor. Why should I care? 
but chances are that someone you know is a victim of sexual assault or abuse. Your family, your friends, or your partner is a survivor, and it's only by making a safer environment for everyone that they'll find the courage they need to speak out. It's because each of you is here tonight, and because you've chosen to support the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, that we have an environment in our community where survivors can speak out. Thank you. so many people and when it gets to the point where I know girls my age who have been affected by this and even younger then you really know that you have a problem. Cleveland Rape Crisis Center brings their expertise, their knowledge in how to deal with difficult situations, how to talk about a subject that sometimes people don't want to talk about. The purpose of Youth 360 is to involve teenagers in the community because we all know that kids have a lot of ideas and they're the ones who really are going to be the motivators to make change in the world. I became so much more moved by everything and had so much more of a desire to try to help and change these things. And I never anticipated that we'd be interviewed and get in the paper for that, but that's just even more motivating for us to keep going and try to do more and change more. Well, the SAVE campaign was started by Lauren and I, and it stands for the Sexual Assault and Violence Education Campaign. And that came about by the two of us teaming up for our community service project that we were intended to create at the end of our Youth 360 members year. And so we've brought that to the school. We've had a great response and reaction from the community, not just here at St. Joe's, but outside into the Cleveland community as well. I applaud the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center for developing the Youth 360 program. 
It's bringing young people together at a time when they can be leaders and influence their peers. This is an important topic that we need to start talking about at the earliest time possible, and this is a great program. Our students have really thrived. The Cleveland Rape Crisis Center has taught me what it means to be a friend to not only my peers in teaching them what I'm learning, but also to the people who are facing these issues themselves. And being a friend to them is very important because you don't want them to feel like they're alone. And when they feel like they have people there to help them, it's then that they can learn to overcome these issues. We should be able to eradicate this from our society. And it's up to the people who find fault with this, who get upset about this issue, to really make the change. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm Megan O'Brien. I'm president of Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. It is so wonderful to see so many friends here tonight at Sing Out. Thank you. And I want to give it up for the Sing Out Corral, please. Reflecting about the theme of tonight's event, which is friendship, of course, I thought a lot about my own friends and the role that they've played in my life. Many of these friends are here tonight, and many of these friends I work side by side with at the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, where I have learned so much about the value of friendship. A true friend comes to our aid 
anytime we call, day or night. A true friend stands by us in times of celebration and in times of crisis. A true friend loves us unconditionally and without judgment. It's no coincidence that friendship is the theme of tonight's sing out because it is parallel to the profound support that the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center provides to survivors every single day. At the core of our deepest friendship, I believe is a key ingredient, and I'm sure you all agree, and that ingredient is the ability to listen. So instead of trying to tell you all about the important work that the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center does tonight, I decided to sit back and listen. And in listening, I realized that everything we really need to know about the power of the center and the power of friendship, we've already heard tonight. I listened to Belinda and heard that she now embraces her own definition of normal and that she knows how to live and be happy and have fun. I listened to Kevin and heard that he is stronger than he ever imagined he could be and that by listening to others, he's begun to heal his own pain. I listened to Carson, and I heard that she was comforted to find a place that is confidential and where people understood exactly what she was going through. I listened to this beautiful choir of volunteer voices sing out to survivors to let you know that you're not alone and that we're here to uplift you. I listened to Caroline, and I heard her say with conviction that we can eradicate rape from our society, but it's up to all of us, those who are not going to tolerate this crime of violence any longer. I listened and I listened to the stories of so many of our clients at the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. And again and again, I was inspired by the transformation and hope that can take place in people if we just do one simple thing and that is listen. And how amazing it is that we have over 800 people here tonight who have come together to do just that, to listen. And it's because of the so many thousands of stories that we listen to at the Rape Crisis Center that we're here and that we've set a very ambitious goal for tonight. It is so exciting that through your generosity, we have absolutely reached record numbers. We've raised more money and sold more tickets than ever before. And we have just $30,000 to go, which I know sounds like a huge amount, but with over 800 people here tonight, that's just $37 a person. It's not too big of a chunk of change, really, when you think about it. And if you can help us tonight, that's one more story that can be heard. It's one more survivor that can walk through the doors of the Rape Crisis Center. So please, if you can, there's an envelope in your program. You can visit us at the reception, which I hope all of you will join us at to celebrate the success of tonight's Sing Out. At some point in our lives, all of us have needed to lean on a friend. You've listened to Belinda, to Kevin, to Carson, to Caroline. You've listened, and I hope that you have heard how much your support and your friendship means to them and thousands of others. Thank you.
it's a car you lack Naturally buy you a Cadillac Whatever you need any time of the day or night I'm not ashamed to say I hope it always will stay this way Love is a 
way. Cause it was.